Hello everyone, in this video I will teach you how you can track purchases and abandoned carts on your website using a little code that you can find in automation. Stay tuned. Alright, so most of you might already be familiar with this view, so we are in an automation workflow and now let's see where we can find this code. So there are a few conditions that you can use which are purchase made, you can use visited URL and you can use abandoned cart. So what's in common here is that they use the same code, exactly the same. You will only install the code once and it will work for the three of them. And if you already saw my video about uh, installing a pop-up on your website, the code is exactly the same. So if you are, have already done that, you can find on the top right corner, you don't need to do it again. And now let's see the code and you will also notice that there are two codes and I will explain you the difference in both. Let's now click here. And well, so we have the first code here, which is the one that will be installed on the head of the page. And what this code will do is it will track people that, uh, for example, in this specific case, uh, as we are using the purchase condition, it will track people that purchased uh, from your website. And in particular, this will track people that accessed your website through a message that you've sent in GetResponse. So if you send a newsletter and uh, the, your newsletter hyperlinks to your website, then we will be able to track. If the person accesses your website directly, so not through a message uh, in GetResponse, we need a different way to track this person. So you will need the second code here. And this is just an example here. And if you go for the second code, if you will need this one, you will need to contact a web developer as uh, PHP here is a web is just an example as we um, can't really provide every example for every language here. And it also depends on the environment that you are uh, using. What's important to note here is that this code has to be added to the page where you capture your uh, contacts uh, information, for example, the email. So this has to be placed on, on a page where you have a form. Let's put it uh, in this way. So when you have a form and someone fills the information, so GetResponse uh, using this code will uh, have uh, access to this information and we can track. So, and let's now see how we can install the first code. We just go here, copy, and we will go to our WordPress. You don't need to have WordPress. Uh, in this situation, you can have any other platform that you use as long as you have access to the code or to the head of the page. Let's now see appearance, team file editor. On the right, you'll see something as a team header. And um, if you don't see that name, you will certainly see header.php or something very similar. And once you click, you will find the head here. As you see, the head starts here and the head ends here. What you need to do is to paste the code exactly at the end of the head, like right before it. It has to be the last thing here. And then you simply click to update. And that, that's all you have to do uh, regarding this code. And you will start already tracking these people as long as they come from a message in GetResponse so that we are tracking them already. Now, there are a few situations here uh, that you've done everything correctly. Let's say even if you have both codes, but people are not entering your workflow. And well, what it, it can mean is that, well, people perhaps have rejected the cookies, so we cannot track because they rejected cookies on your website. And another situation is, let's imagine that you start your workflow with a different uh, condition uh, to start. Let's say if people clicked a certain link, then you would check if they made a purchase. But let's say that they are still on this block, but they already purchased from your website. So this means we won't track. They need to be exactly on this block here, on the purchase block, uh, for then the, the purchase to occur and we will be able to track and then they will follow to the next blocks. So pay attention to that. And regarding the second code, what's important to note from this video is that you know how it is used. So it is used in a page where you can uh, capture the information from your uh, website's visitor. So that to get response can have this information as well and we will be able to track. This way you can instruct your web developer what he needs to do. Take that code, transform it into the version of the language of your website and place it on the page where you, tracked, where you capture this information. 
At the end of this video, you'll find the button that will take you directly to your workflows. And if you don't have any, you can start creating one. And well, it's time for you to start tracking people who purchase from your website and enable your automations. I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you in the next one.